Probably now I do believe there's going to be a somewhere to be. Yes, ma'am. And that wraps up this story. We got two new power parts. Wizard Operator and Gravity Wave Antenna plus a whole bunch of cash and tech points. Alright, so new part. Let's head over to... Let's go B. Wizard Operator. Increases mobility and targeting by 25%. We will increase cash, money, and tech... In uh, XP, money, and tech points. Effects do not stack with other parts. Alright, so let's, let's go over to... Bang Ray. We have the V circuit, which was EN, and has EN regeneration. Different movement damage and range. This drops my range, but oops, but boosts my mobility, and thus dodging. And sight, and thus accuracy. Plus XP cash attack points. So let's go with that one. Because. Bang Ray is going to be in pretty much every major mission, according. So, there's that. Factory. Pack customize. We have enough for another level up. So, we have Bounty Hunter, Tack Point Bonus, and Reverse Engineer. So, this gets me more tech points, so let me buy more gear. This one gets me more cash, so I can level up my ships more. And this splits the difference. I'm going to split the difference, I think. Yep, so got that. Next rank is going to be Tugging Force Burst, which boosts the focus for anyone who gets ES, um, EXC3, gets a focus boost. So all these are for gets EXC3, so either damage boost, movement boost, or focus boost. Focus Boots lets me get my special attacks faster. EXC lets me get my... The Critical Boots lets me deal more damage. Just with Critical Hits, which... Happens some of the time, but not all the time. So I'm leaning more towards Focus Boost or Acceleration Boost. Alright, I'm going to Cash. Okay, let's go to someone who's been a bit a little less. Alright. Alright, my game, we've upgraded your power all the way. Gruen Goose, pretty good shape. the mechless real quick and so you're pretty energy focused you're ammo focused energy focused ammo focused split the difference I thought the difference. We've also, we've also pretty much heavily. Okay, we've maxed out your energy already. Your energy has been maxed out already. Let's go with maxing out yours. Alright. One step at a time. Sorry about that. Cat keeps pawing the uh, microphone. More time.
and then on with the story missions. Hello, Captain. It's glad we finally have the pleasure of meeting one another at last. The pleasure's all mine. I just wish we could have met under better circumstances, but all possible, to be honest. But these are desperate times, I suppose. Enough for us to be in touch with the Earth Federation forces, at least. My thoughts exactly, which is why I think we should get to work figuring out exactly how we're going to get the situation under control, if that's all right. Yeah, sounds pretty good to me. I'd say we're pretty much on the same page. But before that, there's one thing I want to say. What is it? I find it pretty amazing that... You know, such a young operator from the Lizard War is now actually sitting on the captain's chair on the Nazco now. When things were different, someone normal, normally someone a little more qualified would be running the ship. I mean, Yurika and Misumaru. Perhaps. Anyway, getting back to business, I read your report on the Mars successors abducting Class A jumpers. All right, within the ship's crew, I believe Yurika, Akito, and Inez are among those who have been kidnapped. You've actually been keeping an eye. We've been keeping an eye for the likely, on the likely culprits for quite some time. There's still a lot about them we haven't found out quite, found out yet. Chief among them is where they get their financing and how extensive their support network is. We haven't turned up any good leads, no matter where we look. Baita didn't know about the connections either. He wasn't sure why a, bunch, why a group of criminals with no past ties would suddenly start to work together. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Looks like his plan is starting to move forward too. Is that to say you know about the Brave Express Corps? Somewhat, though we've done some stooping we've done some stooping into them too, but I've mostly been just keeping an eye on them since we since they weren't really doing anything wrong. Let's let sleeping dogs lie and let them get their work done as some of the good guys, I figure. I can agree with that. But yeah, we're still up to square one when it comes to figuring out what's up with the Mars successes. Something's definitely going on though. I can feel it. Me too. Someone or someone or something out there is trying to drag us into a big long, another big long war. To what end, who knows? Great minds thinks alike. I think our choice for, the, for now is to try and get to the bottom of whatever's going on as we try to take out the Marsian successors. If I may change something for a minute, I get the impression of Celestial Being is a keen interest in the Jovian Federation. Rory, you talk a lot, you talk more in this game than you did in the entirety of um, Nondisco. Like, the entire original Nondisco series. Well, you could say we're related to them in a way. What do you mean, exactly? I guess now is a good time to talk about it as any. Basically, the founder of Celestial Being, Eolia Shen Schenberg, he worked with the Jovian Federation when he was still alive. Essentially, he tried to help them, he helped deal with immigrants who, run, who tried to run away from Mars and off to Jupiter. This is the first time I've heard any of this. Eolia deserved to develop the GN drive on Jupiter, which is how I figure he and the Jovians first met. In fact, I suspect that the technology he developed relies on the ancient remnants that the Jovian Federation found in the Jupiter sphere. Is that to say Celestial Being feels some amount of responsibility for the Jovians attacking Earth? We don't have a full enough picture to really say. We actually don't know and don't even entirely know what Eolia's ideals are or his overall plan, but at the very least we agree with him about ending war for good. Knowing that, even if he worked with the Jovians at the end of the day, if they're trying to start a war, then it's our job to stop it. Let me ask you one more question. Are you all fighting in some attempt to try to atone for what you've done in the past? Yes and no, it's hard to put into words. Words. It's probably fair to say that some of us are trying to make amends for our, the sins of our past. I know I'm one of them, at the very least. But more importantly, the biggest reason we fight is so the little world, world can one day know true peace in its future. That much hasn't changed since we first started to intervene in global conflicts. Thank you for explaining, that's all I wanted to know. You all seem to be a very steadfast group of people. Thank you, I'll take this as a compliment. It means a lot to hear, kind of that coming from you after fighting together earlier. Norega, we've got a big problem. What is it, Melina? Word got out about Princess Angelise from the Misurugi Empire actually being a Norma. What? Are you serious? Her Highness Princess Angelise Ikaruga underwent her first right of baptism as right of baptism as first princess of the Misurugi Empire. It was there that her identity as a Norma was revealed. Prince believes where her father, Emperor Jirai As Asuka Misurugi, who kept the information suppressed until her 16th birthday today. Initially, the prince intended to flee, but failed, and has since been arrested by authorities. Her mother, Empress Sophia Ikaruga Misurugi, who assisted her, has said to find the hiding. 
Oh, the same case of breaking news. We have announced what directly the Imperial throne. Effectively, Maria... Amelia. Uh, immediately. Julio... Julio Asuka Misaruki is now the official head of the Misaruki Empire. Furthermore, Pearl Court Emperor Jirai Asuka Misaruki has been deemed a friend of the Trade of the Empire for attempting to install a norma to the Imperial throne. His title has been stripped and he is now in custody. The princess, her title and nationality been revoked. She said to have been substantially banished from the Empire for her crimes. Wait! Wait a minute! Hold on a second! Did we just shift gears into cross edge? Like, how are. Oh, oh, I, I get how we fit non disco and Gundam Double O in the setting. It's a little dubious, but it works. It did a really good job of combining the Gundam franchise and Martian successor non disco and fitting them together in a manner that makes sense. How the hell do you get cross edge? How does that fit? Because part of the thing with Cross Edge is they're like fighting magical beasts in their giant robots. That's all I have to report now from the Empire. And what? Another day, another big scandal. What else is new? I don't know. Angelise was a really popular figure with the general public in the Mystery Empire. I doubt her being a normal will go down well with a lot of folks. Er, I have a question. What the actual... Er, I have a question. What the actual hell is going on here? This all makes no sense. It feels like you're, you, you shoved an entirely different franchise in here all willy-nilly without any comprehension for how well thematically, technologically, or or in, just in, in terms of the general context of world building that setting fits in with the rest of them. I understand this is the most ambitious crossover franchise in the history of video games, but oh my god! Yeah, me too. Shoot, what is it? This is probably a dumb question to ask, but what's a Norma? Who's the Misurugi Empire? What is this? I don't even... What? Are you guys kidding me? I mean, the way you guys are talking, get this supposed to be bad? But that's about it. Man, I can't believe I'm hearing this. Don't they teach you guys anything? kids anything is cool these days from alternate universe oh don't be so hard them Saburuta. they only just came to our dimension relatively recently you know and chitose has been stuck in japan the whole time cut them both some slack that mean you don't know what mana either huh yeah i definitely have it at least what's mana well there's like five different types red black blue green and white each connected to various different types of um, land based on what those lands represent thematically. Oh, you mean the other kind of mana? Um, just... Mana's special power lets you do things like transmit information and generate matter at will. It's the kind of thing that defines and changes settings at a dramatic level. So it's it's understandable why you would be rather surprised that this didn't come up. Because it's kind of a big, fat, hairy deal. It's like a really big deal in the setting of Cross Ange. And I know this without having watched the show. So I... Like, everything else thus far, I, I, I can't stress enough, everything else in there fits in the, within the context of this universe. Um, the Celestial Being and the, the events of Mars and Sister Nandisco, even having um, the Brave Defense Force as mecha su super robot mecha superheroes, um taking on various super robot supervillains uh, even fits when you have the super powered giant robot when you have the, the um, various technologies from those two settings in there and the possibility of hey maybe to take a page from um, <clears throat> Pat Labor people might come to use giant robots for crimes 
this doesn't fit. Just think of it as magic. That's the basic idea. Which is why my head is exploding right now. Exploding, reforming, and exploding again. Magic? Really? That sounds way too good to be true. It's real? Do you... Yes, but the people from the Founding Nations can use it. Founding Nations? I don't think I've heard of them either. Sorry. Founding Nations are lands made up of some of the oldest, longest-lasting countries in this world. So... China, Italy, Persia, um... So, so, so like, we're, we're talking, um... Middle East, Africa, um, the men, the Mediterranean, with the side of uh, China and India. Even with the Earth Federation around now, okay, they still have a, nowadays they still have, still have a lot of influence over things. Yeah, the fighting nations are so powerful that even the Atlantic Federation takes orders from them. Technically, some parts, some nations of the Atlantic Federation should be part of the founding nations. Again. Um, there's a few, um, well, actually, no. Because the oldest polyphonic nation before on the Mediterranean coast or, um, Indian Ocean. Anyway, it's people who live in the founding nations that can actually use mana. Or put another way, anyone who can use mana belongs to the founding nations. If you're not one of the lucky ones in this world, too bad. But not everyone is a citizen of those countries can use mana either. That's what Normas are, people born in the founding nations who can't use it. God, this is like the Normas, mana users, and new types thing. Hey. I guess that makes them outcasts, huh? A little more complicated. I realize it, but seeing as you're not right here, Norm, which does say, but Normas aren't treated like normal people, like you and me. Normas don't have any human rights. People see them, how people see them as monsters who don't have any rights to live. They're despised within those country societies. So why does the founding nations or whatever they are have any political power in the first place? This seems like the, considering that everyone else in the world would be Normas. That would be the kind of thing that would lead to a major degree of war between the founding nations and the rest of the world. That's crazy, isn't it? It's not like those people did anything wrong. You're not the only one who thinks that. I feel the same way, too. In fact, lots of people have thought that for a really long time. But life is in those countries. On top of that, normal people who use managers fine don't seem to mind the status quo all that much. It, it's here's another bit for where the cross and cross um, shoving it in here doesn't seem to work. This is the kind of thing that would again would lead to major global conflict. Every, if everyone else in the world outside of the founding nations are effectively normas, and the people in the founding nations consider normas beings who, exi who who should only be killed, basically, or subhumans. Then they should basically be. Then the founding nations, both in that ideology, would be super militaristic expansionists trying to take over the world, and everyone would be trying to push back on them. Or everyone else in the world would be pushing back because the fate of the the, the, the state of the normas within the founding nations is absolutely unacceptable. Cross Angie exists as its own separate e works best conceptually within the context of its own separate universe. Like, or as part of a larger fantasy universe. Like, if Cross Angie show, like, Cross Angie is going to be, or is in Super Robot Wars X, the game that's out right now, which also includes a heavy crossover element of Feist and Well. Um, so, or a Battler Dunbean and that sort of thing. 
and Asuka Floating and other more magical mecha-oriented series. Cross Angie fits in there perfect. It fits less well here. And by less well, I mean badly. It's like a puzzle piece from a different puzzle that just happens to have the right shape barely and get kind of mashed into the larger piece. Once the rest of the puzzle is put together, this chunk sticks out like a sore thumb. And that means the Federation's hands are tied, sadly. That's horrible! Why aren't people doing something? That's a good question! That's a question I've been asking repeatedly over and over again for about the last ten minutes. You're right, it is horrible. On the flip side, it does make for bad PR. Not many people travel to or from the foundation countries. Because you show up, they find out you can't use magic, and then, for, and then you end up in uh, exploitation film prison. Though really, from my gather, it's more like they don't like outsiders fucking things up. Tough rocks, pal. They think they're special and better than everyone else just because they can use a little fancy magic. Which is why everyone else outside the hunting nation prefers to keep their distance as long as possible. As long as trouble doesn't keep come knocking on their doorstep. I guess that's why I didn't see a thing about all this in the news until now. Yeah, but regardless, it's pretty wild that a princess from there turned out to be going by herself. Her report meant she was banished, right? What do you think's going to happen to her? Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine, kid. Honestly, at the very least, it probably doesn't mean she's going to be outright killed for being a Norma. Of course not. Nobody outside the Foundation can use mana anyway, but everyone else she will be just normal. I'm sure she'll blend in just fine. Yeah, she'll probably find another country somewhere to settle in and go on with her luck. Ah, uh, no. No. No, because... I know enough about Cross Angie to know that it borrows a significant amount narratively from women in prison films, so there's that. It's time to deploy everyone. We're moving out. You guys must just decide where we're going next. What we're doing next then. Yeah, we're heading to Area D of the Pacific Ocean. Really? You guys are sure you guys are sure that's such a good idea? What's the point of even going out there? Sorry, what's Area D? I I don't know about that either. Just assume for a moment that I am from another world and know you know nothing about what's going on here, because I am, and I don't. Basically, it's an area that's cut off from normal airplane flight paths and satellite trajectories. Oh yeah, Captain Murray told me about it. There's some continent rumored to be there, right? It's not that special. Machines can't just can't work properly because of the strong magnetic fields around there. People give up on developing on it. That doesn't sound as fun as I imagined. It's a great place to go on vacations if you want to get if you want to just cut for, get free from phones, and, uh, television, and social media and that sort of thing. A whole bunch of great camping lodges out there. Just really kick back and relax and be separate from the world for a while. No, that's not how it, what people do there. You still haven't told us what we're doing there. There are a few ways into the area, making it possible for people to amass at such places and establish strongholds. I bet the Marsons' successors would try to pull that. Indeed. Put simply, we have reason to believe the enemy has set up a base within a, the perimeter of the area. The original plan was just to meet up, our, meet up with our allies in form, but since it's on the way, we decided to find a look into Area D as well. Fine, that's not our only reason for doing this. Tsuburaki seems to be finally willing to break, ready to break some of the taboos in this world. I just hope she understands what she can get us all into. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.